and you need to have one that will make contact with the rear section where the studs go through. So we'll set our adapter on first with the recessed part towards the rotor. The next thing is we need is a spring. There's a short spring and a tall spring. The short spring is for rotors, the tall spring is for drums. Put our short spring on. Next we need to find a cone that fits the hub opening in the rotor. For rotors, you have to use thin cones, not the thick cones. Thick cones are for drums. These thin cones are for rotors. So we need to find a thin cone that will fit into the opening of the rotor and come through just a little bit. If the cone you find goes all the way through, it's not the right one. So we found our cone. That goes on next with the tapered part towards the rotor. Next we'll put our rotor on and we'll find the outer adapter. The outer adapter is also one of these big machined ones. Tapered or recessed part towards the rotor, flat part out. Now we have to take up some of the space on the arbor there and they make spacers for that. The spacers you'll see are straight machine, have like a knurled section on it. There's also one with a rubber dampener. A lot of people tend to want to use these as spacers. These with the tapered edges are not spacers. These are adapters for uh, rotors that have bearings built in to, or for bearing races. So these are not spacers. These are spacers. So we'll put on some spacers just so it uses up some of this arbor shaft, take some of the space of it. Um, you always want to at least use one of the ones with the rubber uh, bushing. So it looks like we're going to, it's going to use one solid spacer, one rubber spacer, rubber, whatever you want to call it, spacer. Um, the nut itself, the, t the threads are only on one side of it. So the nut also acts like a little bit of a spacer. It's like a half the size of one of those other ones. So if you don't need the spacing part, then you would put the threads on first. If you need to use some of that spacing part, you would put the spacer part on first. And that's what we're going to do here. So we'll slide it on. These threads for these brake legs are not righty tighty lefty loosey. They're reverse thread. So for this particular piece of equipment, it's lefty tighty. Right. We get our wrench. It has two sizes. One size is for this arbor nut. The other size is for locking down the cutting head. We'll take it and put it on there. And all it takes is just one or two bumps with your hand like that. You don't have to put this on Hercules tight. It's just one or two little bumps. Next, we'll take our silencer band. They make two different types of silencer bands. One has lead in it. That's for vented rotors. And then one just looks like a really big a rubber band or like a vacuum cleaner belt. That's for solid rotors. This is where a lot of people go wrong. They try to just put it on the rotor and then stretch it. Start it from the bottom and stretch the entire belt over it. And then just lock, lock, lock it onto one of the lead pucks. Make sure it's within the outer part of the rotor. Uh, and that is, it's pretty, and there's no loose flap parts of the belt's flap where you can get caught up in the cutting and hit you. Now we got it all locked in place. We'll check spin it. Make sure it spins nice and true, not wobbly, not bouncing up. You, a lot of times you can find a spot on the wall behind you, kind of a, like a sighting point to eyeball it to make sure it's true and not spinning all crazy. Um, I'll give you an example of what it may look like if you got it wrong. don't want is something like that or something that's wobbling this way. So we'll loosen that again. Alright, 
Now we we'll bring our cutting head into play. Um, you want to slide it over, move the rotor in and out, whatever you have to do to center up the rotor with the opening and the cutter head. Don't try to center up to the bits first. Just center it to the opening and the cutting head. Kind of eyeball it. It's got like a little hole right here where the shield goes. So you can use that as a reference mark. You want this to kind of be like at a 90 degree angle, as close as you can get it to a 90 degree angle. And then lock this guy down. This doesn't have to be ridiculously tight either. Just snugged up. Then we'll bring our cutting head into play with a slight, slight amount of tension on these pull down pins, just, just ever so slightly, just so there's, they're not just loose in there. Um, start turning in our cutting heads and bring them close to the rotor. And then this is where you'll look down at it and you want the bits to be even on both sides of the rotor. You don't want one bit further in ahead than the other one. You want them pretty even. So at this point is where you would make adjustments on the bits to get everything true. Once you have it that way, you want to run the machine all the way in without making contact on the bits and make sure that the machine will be able to do a full sweep on the rotor. So you run it all the way in, make sure to go full travel, and then run it all the way out, make sure to go full travel. Then after that, that's when you can start doing your next steps would be to start cutting. But this is rotor setup on an Amco Brake Blade.